about to learn today how to do thread sketching with free motion quilting for super beginners. This is exactly what we are teaching in this class and you're gonna learn how to do this amazing, amazing technique with this other amazing example <laughs> right here. So let's start understanding what is thread sketching because there's a lot of information around the internet and around all the things in the world and people sometimes mistake names and etc so we like to put everyone touch base with everyone and we all know what we are talking about so quilting is how can i say this one soul with the function with the intent of securing layers completely to a fabric. So we quilt a quilt to sew together the three layers, the common three layers of a quilt, top, bedding, and backing. And this one seam, this one sewing line is what we called quilting. So it's we do that line, that drawing with thread <laughs> yeah with the machine we call it machine quilting if we do by hand we call it hand quilting if we do on our computer computerized quilting free motion quilting etc etc so we refer to any technique of quilting when this quilting is like one pass or one layer of sewing but sometimes we refer to quilting as an artistic technique or, or an art quilting. And this is where the, the use of this quilting surpass this technical intent to attach these three layers. So it surpassed that. We are aiming for a visual information. We are trying to convey a meaning or a determined intentional aesthetic and it's it's different from a very pretty quilting <laughs> or a very figurative quilting because it's only a figure in this one pass of quilting will still be called this just quilting but beautiful quilting figures or quilting feathers for us that not that's not artistic it's just one aesthetic option for that quilting base foundation artistic quilting is when we have to do this extra work extra pass extra quilting we have to do something more to get to that other layer of aesthetic that we need and thread sketching falls into this category because when we are thread sketching um, we are quilting several times sometimes in the same spot because we are aiming for an aesthetic organization, for an aesthetic result that resembles drawing, very sketchy drawing, a drawing that was made very freely. And that is sketching, that really scribble, almost like a scribble art in the paper word. <laughs> so thread sketching is when we have several passes aiming for this drawing, scribbled, hand-free guided aesthetic, even though if it's not free guided, hand guided. In our case, it will be free motion quilting, thread sketching, so it will be hand guided, but we will have some helpers in the way. So let's get to it. Hi Quilter! Welcome to Orbital Quilting. I'm Alini and I'm Natasha. And that's where we are we get to actually start in the practical stuff. The the nice part. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what materials do you need to do this amazing thread sketching? And you know, I'm just going to disclose here that right now I am addicted to thread sketching, so I will try to keep my object adjectives short, but <laughs> it's simply amazing. So what materials do you need to make it? 
Well, you don't need anything else than the quilting supplies you already have. So it's pretty, pretty nice because it is an artistic technique. It's a special technique of quilting, but you don't need nothing else. You, you can use your yeah. bedding, you can use the thread you are used to when you are doing free motion quilting, and that's it. Nothing fancy for this technique specifically. So while you can do the thread sketching absolutely free-handed, free-guided, free motion, there are some moments where you want some specific figures like the amazing Halloween because it is October so we're going to talk about Halloween for Probably sure. the whole sure. month. <laughs> I don't know but we should. We but should. We should. But anyway um, but then of course we have the Halloween custom workshop where you can learn more than 30 designs that are free-handed and they are let's say with a lot of quotes just quilting <laughs> but sometimes if you're going to do something that is going to be very strongly seeable maybe depending on the occasion you may want to mark a few things so you keep the proportions and the scale of your design very neat very nice and then if you want to make a lot of pillowcases of it they will look somewhat the same also whole cloth quilting always um, almost always requires some kind of marking there are less or or more and of course you can do a no marking at all whole cloth there's a lot of ways to do yeah. that but generally for whole cloths we do some kind of marking just to keep the proportions etc yeah. so we are teaching you the market way this time because we if you already have this mark you will not be concerned if your design will turn out pretty, you don't have to know how to do the proportions and yeah. positions and directions of the figure in this quilting because you already know how to, where you have to go and how things will end up. So you can do threads catching the orbital way, which is having fun and guaranteeing that it's going to be super, super, super amazing in the end. Not always with marking, but this time with marking. You can grab this des the design we're using in the description in the link below, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's, with, let's even start by saying that we're going to use a design on paper, but we are going to mark this and not quilt over the paper because that is not going to be sustainable and is going to be a pain in the you know where <laughs> because we're going to rip we're going to need to rip the paper later on so let's if use this you quilt over the, over paper. the paper that's yes. why we don't like to do it yes okay so for this amazing Halloween school we have two parts and first thing we need to join this part so grab your paper sizer and then this okay. and then you put that okay <laughs> so let's just cut here you can cut that with wow what is the name of estilage I don't know yeah. <laughs> anyway you can cut this the way you want. Let's yeah. keep it that way. That's not a sizer, a fabric sizer, if you're wondering. Yes. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is align the design. So we need to align all the lines <laughs> for sure of the design. And if you have a light table, that will be very useful in this moment in the orbital board um, guide guide yeah free yeah. course when people buy this product for us we from. teach from us <laughs> we teach everyone with the orbital board how to use it as a light table, table. among another mm, additional techniques, techniques. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm just putting some tape here 
And I, I know it's not beautiful to use this color tape. It does bother me, but I'm doing that so you can see it. Also, because this is a sustainable to... um, yeah, this is kind of tape. tape. Yeah, this is yeah. paper and the glue is awesome. So it's awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can glue it, actually. You don't need to use the, the tape. But it doesn't matter. The thing is, we have this school here and we have this vertical line in this horizontal line that we can place in the middle of our pillowcase. Yes, yes, we're going to make a pillowcase that is 16 per 16 inches. So for that, I'm going to mark just um, one, you know, the line here of eight inches and it doesn't need to be the whole thing just some dot points here so I can align that super easy so I'm just marking this eight inches and I am using two rulers because I find it easier but of course you can use just one and you can also just fold your fabric yeah. and use that crisp line when we fold it and you don't even have to mark this at all. But, you know, we like to mark it so you can see exactly what we are doing. Yeah, so amazing. Now, because this paper is going to be used forever and ever, we're going to put under the fabric. And the first thing we're going to make is to align the dot line that I have here and the Lines, paper line the, yeah the paper line <laughs> yes yeah, so this will be centralized awesome okay. so we have two options for this design these that is separated you mm -hmm. will see and we have the other ones that are the yeah, 16 you're... pillow completely yeah now what i'm going to do is use a, a erasable marker this is a water soluble one that we love and i'm going to trace these parts if you want to use a darker fabric you will need a light table or your yeah. orbital board as a light table yes but on light fabric you can just you can usually yeah, see through super. yeah and because it's a small design i don't need to pin it or, or anything as long as i don't move it i keep everything secure and stable while i'm drawing the lines it's all good and remember the link for this design is in the description along with three other designs that we're going to show you later on. They're all amazing. They're all Halloween for you to have the more, the most spooky Halloween of all times. Are you a Halloween equator? Tell us, we definitely are. Oh yeah. Only this year we released two new courses, yeah. <laughs> two new products. So the these radio straight lines I have here, I can dot, yeah, maybe dot, dot them yeah. because I can use them to the background we're going to have here, and they're going to be helpful. But you don't necessarily need to do this. But you know, we like to show you the easier, the easiest way. And oh, oh my God, <laughs> a giant eye is missing. And you can choose how many steps and facilitators you're going to use in your quilting life. Okay, so now I'm going to take that off and I'm going to grab the spider web and I'm going to place them aligned with the four corners and <clears throat> I'm going to mark. This one, I can mark just this part and then the rest I don't need to. And this is going to be more than enough for me to do this because of the order we're going to quilt this and we're going to show you on the machine. But then I'm going to mark one completely so you can see it. We like to mark the 
the bare minimum yeah. <laughs> of things. This is so way too even much. Though, yeah, so even though we have this design specifically for marking the design, we always oriented our students to mark the very minimum they need. So sometimes you think you'll need the whole school, let's say, but you don't you don't need these three circles. Yeah. You just need the, the one, one outside. Yeah. yeah. Or you think you need the whole spider web, but you actually don't need. You just need um the guidelines here so you don't pass yes that area so there's a lot of marking that sometimes you do and you don't even know that you don't, you need, don't need yeah them. yeah the the same way i said i could mark just this outer arcs i can also in a further step i can mark this big arcs here and then i don't need to mark these little arcs because then i can make them Freely, yes, but again, I'm going to mark so you can see the whole thing. But those are things that are very nice for you to start realizing, really paying attention to how much marking are you doing just because of habit, but you don't actually need it. Or even if you think you need very, very much, how about you try to mark somewhat less so that you can practice that. Let us know in the comments if you're liking these little tips to not mark everything at all and just take a minute to think if you really need that specific marking. Because yeah. we started as professional quitters, so we were actually afraid of using markers yeah. on our clients' quilts because we never knew what kind of fabric or what kind of, you know, treatment the fabric received, like a stash or something like that. So starch, I'm sorry, <laughs> starch <laughs> or something like that. Stash, we all know what means. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, oh. okay, okay. I'm I'm stash crazy. Um, so we were very afraid to mark things after our very first quilt that we marked everything. So mm. even this dot marked line, this way of dotting things is something that I think it's very clever and people should do often and people should do with a lot of marking because you don't need the these lines specifically to be complete they mm -hmm. can be dotted or traced like we did here yeah. but when you do it dotted you put like oh wow. a lot less ink let me show yeah. you so this is 100 percent of one line okay but if i put little dots little dots yeah. little dots little dots my brain can complete this information and I can see the line, but the amount of ink that I put on my actual fabric is so smaller, then I will need less water to remove, to remove it. And I get more chances to remove it in the first time I put water on it. Because if you're used to using water soluble markers you will you probably know that sometimes you have to put water a couple of times because the first time the water is not able to carry those ink molecules into the air yeah so we have to put water over and over again but if you're using dots because you're reducing the amount of the ink you're actually putting in your fabric Sometimes just one pass is enough. Yeah. For us, most of the times when you use the orbital dotting lines, <laughs> we um, just use a small amount of water and just one time. That's amazing. Yeah, but you know, the, the important thing to talk to you about is, okay, you don't need the whole spider web. Maybe you don't need all the three 
circles on the eye, but look at this school and now imagine that you have this fabric and you need to put that school here. Right so, in the center. Yeah, yeah. So this is very challenging and I would say almost impossible to nail that in a way that is going to amaze you. So this design particularly, even though we could remove some of the details when we're marking like the three balls and sometimes these expression um, lines Traces. here. Yeah, but the position of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the head itself, this would be almost impossible to nail without the marking. And when we are in this position, where not only it's a big figure, it's the central figure, is almost the only thing in this whole cloth is this figure. It's a super special quilting we're making. We're making a special technique. So then let's mark that because this oh, is yeah. going to be smarter, easier, and we're going to have so much more fun. And, you know, before we go to the machine, to the actual thread sketching part, that is why we're here, let me show you the other figures. Let me just think, okay. while you... <laughs> I have to make an... Um, a, an orientation for you. So you've marked your design onto your top sandwich for your quilt, your top fabric to make your quilt sandwich to actually quilting it. So you were not pressing this, oh, yeah. this quilt never again until <laughs> you remove these markings because all, repeat with me, all chemicals are unstable. Even water evaporates, gets liquid, gets solid, get, turns into snow. All chemicals are unstable and inks are chemicals. I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about like everyday chemicals. I don't know if, if there's this, this joke in, in English speaking here in here in Brazil is like a totally totally is a uh, done joke <laughs> talking about chemicals so that's why I'm talking about this right now so you were not putting heat in this you're not pressing it you're not allowing direct sunlight you're not um, placing this to rest like to the other day next to a window where it can grab direct sunlight because this is a chemical and all chemicals are unstable. But of course you can do your sandwich as you already know how to do. You just have to press this fabric before. Okay, yes. now and, we're ready. And if you don't know how to do, there is Orbital Sandwich Workshop Which for is you so to amazing. make it. Perfect sandwiches without glue, noodles crawling over the floor that will get you free of puckers, wrinkles, and plates. So, I will read a comment. I have oh to because God. you know I uh, we okay. received these these. Okay, let me. So, Fran Baldwin said. I took this course, it is so amazing. The explaining to why and how, this is the other Halloween course that is just a few videos down. <laughs> um, the explaining to why and how is going to help me with so much more in my quilting, in other projects as well. And I want to recommend also, this is the part that I am, well, I love the entire <laughs> comment. And I want to recommend also the sandwich course. Yes, we know what we think and we think Yes, we think we know what we should do. But just today, while preparing my fabric, just to know that levitate my iron instead of pressing down made my fabric relax. How simple and like the girls say, amazing. <laughs> so she is referring to an, a technique that we, we thought on the sandwich course. And it's amazing. So just, just carry on with her sandwich. And yeah. let's get inspired with some other yes. eye candy, and then we go to the machine. Yeah, so the four 
uh, pillowcases that we have for this Halloween faces design quilting pattern that Xavier the cat is is referring to and is of course talking to is the pumpkin then we have the mummy and yeah you have to run from mummies if you saw one please do run <laughs> <laughs> we have the witch's hat which is amazing yes we even put some witch's hat on xavier uh face <laughs> head so he loves witch's hat yes he does. <laughs> and then the school we're doing today so okay. you can see that what you're seeing and what we've marked is completely different yeah. because we are adding those layers of quilting in the thread sketching process so the marking is not the final result especially for threads catting for thread sketching it's just a guideline okay so let's do it so we're going to start by just making the outer edge of the school face and this step by step is going to be the same for all the four Design designs, in the bundle. yes, in the bundle of Halloween faces. And now I'm already adding some thread sketching Edging. here, but still very discreet, let's say it. And then we're just going to sketch that. When we sketch, is like we're we want to miss the back traveling. It's very therapeutical. It's amazing, <laughs> and it's amazing for beginners because when you are doing quilting over a traced line, yeah. sometimes you get so nervous that you mm -hmm. have to spot that perfectly. line perfectly. Yeah. But with thread sketching, you're aiming not to do that. Mm. And now Natasha is using, she just used the high tension design, which is our super beginner designs that we cannot live without. Yes. And then for the eye, you start with the bigger one. Now let's make this smaller one. And again, it's high tension design inside of it. So this is going to be, you know, painting a bit the the the, the fabric. It's but not, we can see a lot of fabric. Yeah, it's too. not like you thread painting. Not itself. like embroidery. Yeah. Because we are not covering the fabric. Yeah. We are just making a very dense. Yeah. It's, high tension yeah, design. They're super super close. And Natasha goes back and forth in the same spots. So it's very, very dark yeah. with the black thread. Of course, you can also make those faces in a different color. But oh, then, yeah. yeah, dark like, fabric yeah, and dark light, light, light red. Yes. yes. And you can see that Natasha connected the yeah. two eyes so in our marking the eyes are not connected but because this is thread sketching we are connecting them and that will add a little characteristic yeah. a little personality yeah it's going to put some really expression to the face it's not like an empty soulless face <laughs> it's one more trace <laughs> yes and this is very nice because then you get to make everything continuous as well because to be continuous is somewhat a mantra here yeah it's very important it makes everything flow so much better and then, you can see that here in the face except for the nose she's not quilting a lot in those and they lines under, yeah, yeah, under the eyes, under the eyes, on the cheekbones, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so this line is very, very discreet. Yeah, even though it's black, it gets discreet next to the thread sketching itself. And now we're going to make with a different thread color because we thought this would make a greater look to this. It's a purple thread now and we're making just the high tension design. Again and again and yes. again. Yes. And we're following that directions 
dotted lines. The dotted lines, yes. And those help us. Actually, in this quilt particular, I didn't have the dot lines. When you quilted that sample? Yeah, but yeah. they do help a lot for you to make this very... Rounded. Uh, yeah. Angled. Yeah, but that make that uh, gives the, the school or the other figures of Halloween faces this aura it's super nice to it's make. like they're glowing yeah it's like a pop art it's background nice. yeah. yeah and now the spider, spider web. webs so they're pretty so this is one way that we quilt spider webs yeah we have the oh my god dozens yeah we have a lot of ways to quilt spider webs and this is one of them we yeah. teach a lot of spider webs in our Halloween course. Yes. And we're going to try to sketch this a bit too, but then so much less than on the springs, the oh. main figure. And of course, after you do one spider web, you're going to do the other three and, and you you're could... going to have this amazing quilt. You could see in the video that it's not a lot of passes. Just one pass after the main quilting. Yeah. It's already sufficient. enough. Yeah, it's yeah. already enough to get that sketchy look. So yeah. if you're afraid to try, don't be afraid. We are here to help you. Just leave your question and leave your suggestions in the comments. And if you're um, afraid you just do one more and see what it looks like and yeah. see if you like it and if you don't if you feel that it could be a little bit more contrasting or a little a little bit more darker you do another one and then another one so you don't have to do all of those passes all of the layers at once you yeah. can build the layers as you Please go, do. yeah, and that is actually much more beginner friendly because then you were not afraid of overdoing that. It's not possible. So it's not possible that to look ugly because you've already started with a amazing design. It's not possible to get too much quilting because you're building that with layers. And believe me, when I say Natasha is here to prove there is no such a thing as too much thread sketching. Exactly. There is absolutely never, <gasps> never a wrong way of doing thread sketching. That's so uh, free and liberating about it. If you want to grab this design and the four designs bundle, please head to the link in the description. These designs are ready to print. You can print in your home machine. You have home printer no oh, yeah <laughs> you can print on your home printer and you have two options the whole 16 16 inches Layout. pillow yeah. yeah and it could be a panel also. could be anything and actually. the single uh, center motifs and single spider web so you can use only the motif on a block or something like that and it will be amazing yeah. too let us know if you liked it. We'll see you on the next here on the flip side in Orbital Quitting.